So, um, before we go, we can uh, have a little introduction about the Ming Dynasty. Uh, we, for for our purpose on the uh, on the tea development, it can be roughly divided into three stages. And the early Ming is from Hongwu to Suande. That means from 1368 to 1435. And then the mid Ming Dynasty is from Zhang Teng to Zhang De. It means from 1435 to 1521. And then the late Ming period from Jiajing to Chongcheng. This is 1522, the birthday of the Senator Q and to 1644. So actually we have 17 emperors in the Ming Dynasty and the whole history is, is a little bit less than 300 years. So in the year of uh, 1368, the first emperor, Taiju, Zhu Yanzhang, become the emperor. And actually this man come from a poor family, was a Libyan. And he just struggled through his uh, power uh, for many, many kinds of jobs before he acquired the power. He once is a monk, and also once he become a Taoist, and once he become a, a slaughter for pigs, and he did many kinds of jobs. And then finally, he became the, camp, uh, the emperor. So this is his picture. So it was told he had great sympathy on the poor people because he started as a, a very common people, as a poor guy. And so in 1391, this is the 24th year of Hongwu, he made an order to stop the making of the tea cakes for tribute. So with a brief introduction in the Song Dynasty, the tea was made into the cake. And then it was roasted and then pung into powder. And then uh, they used a, a kind of sheath or filter to make the very fine powder. And then this tea powder was put into a bowl and with some water dashing in and then they whisk it. And actually this kind of tea cake is very, very luxurious and very expensive in making and a lot of process. So at that time, only the rich people can have a chance to enjoy this tea. So in 1391, this is a very important age in the Chinese uh, tea development because Zhu Yuanzhang stopped at the making of these tea cakes. But not far away, just maybe 60 years after his death, the, the, the ways of living changes. So at that time, uh, oh, I, I want to mention also about that Zhu Yuanzhang has also exercised a lot of strict rules of the people's living how you dress, what color you are allowed to wear, and how you eat, or even uh, your entertainment, they have a lot of uh, regulations. For example, not all the people are allowed to listen to music or, or opera or something like that. So there's a, a lot of restriction. So actually in the early Ming Dynasty, the people living a very honest life, very humble life, and so the, uh, the whole country is have a good rest and restarting the energy from the Mongols uh, 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 control. But maybe after 60 years of his death, the atmosphere has changed. The people are looking for enjoyment and also luxurious life. So in one of the writing by Zhou Shai, he is a man died in 1508, that in the mid-Ming stage. He said, 
the officials in, the, in Beijing or outside Beijing, the family of the officials and common people, they are looking for luxurious and vulgar life. And each other, they admire, they admire each other and follow the trend. So also, they like to borrow loans for entertainment and put this as a regular uh, uh, habit. So even though the court have many, many orders and commands to stop this kind of fashion, but the people are used to this kind of luxurious life and pursuit for this kind of enjoyment. So you can see uh, just after 60 years of uh, Zhu Yanjiang's death, this, the whole country is changing. The reason for the changing is because the city economy is getting better and the people are getting rich. Also, at that time, um, a group of scholars was starting to emerge and they gained a very special status in the society. So at, in the old days in China, um, most of the people want to become the officers in the court or otherwise you are just farmers in, 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 as a common people. And in the middle, in the Ming Dynasty, some people, they don't want to stay in the court and they are not farmers. Maybe they have some, some land or some properties from the ancestors so they can enjoy a, a freestyle living. And then they are looking for some scholarly uh, ideals. So this kind of people, they study books, they write, write essays and giving different opinion on the, uh, on the situation and something like that. So this kind of class becomes a literati, we call the literati class of the scholar class and begins to emerge in this period. So this kind of people has a very special uh, image and they also care how they dress, how they talk, how they live their living. So their style was much admired by the people at that time and the people follow their fashion. So there's a new head created at that time, new kind of clothing and also you have many, many colors of uh, their clothing. And at that time, the white color is the most popular uh, color between the scholars. So, also one thing is very interesting in the Ming Dynasty is the rise of the unique class. The unique is uh, uh, doing some kind of service to the king and uh, some domestic service to the king. So they are very close to the center of the power because he takes care of everyday life of the king, the queen, and the, the, and the mistress and something like that. So they control the food, control uh, 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 all the daily needs of the king. But the first emperor, Zhu Yuanzhang, he understands so well about the defects of this kind of unique because they are not educated and they are very, um, uh, in some way, they are a little bit uh, love to acquire the power. So at the early stage, Zhu Yuanjiang has established a, a play cast up with iron to say all these eunuchs are forbidden to care the country affairs. They are only limited to do the domestic affair to, for, to the court service. But unfortunately, uh, before long, 
about the fourth emperor, he already depends so much on the eunuch because they are, tends to be more and more lazy. So the rise of this eunuch class is a very important in the Ming Dynasty. So especially to the end of the Ming Dynasty in Jiajing, 1522 to Wanli time. And these two emperor was two longest reign in Ming Dynasty. One is uh, 45 years and the other is 48 years. But ridiculously, judging emperor, he stayed off from his court service for more than 20 years. And then for one Li emperor, he stayed off for 30 years. So that, that means the country was governed not by the king, just by the unique class. So this unique class have a lot of fighting between the officers and themselves because he make all the decision for the emperor, they make the commands from the emperor and actually this is very bad uh, or really uh, maybe you can say a big corruption uh, for the country affairs. So a lot of officers will fight, with, fight against them. So, because of he has the power of, from the king, so many scholars were killed by the eunuch. And so many, some officers, they just apply for the retirement from the office. So there's a great big group of people staying away from the uh, from the service to the government. So what they will do is just uh, we have a record in the in the judging period by a man called Liu Shi Yi. He said, "Today the people are get tired of all kind of conflicts, so he want to stay in." A, silent tranquility. And they want to go into the mountain and are afraid it is not remote enough. He keep away from the secular world and are afraid it is not far away, far enough. But actually, this is wrong. He criticized this phenomenon. Actually, this is wrong because the peaceful state came from your own heart. If you have this kind of tranquility inside yourself and, and the environment, all environment is suitable. So just like Lu Jiuyuan, another philosopher in early Ming Dynasty, he said all the tea houses and wine bars are the places for your exercise. And all the activities of deliver waters and moving the, the, the wood are with the Buddhist nature. So that means uh, at that time, a lot of scholars retire and stay, uh, stay away from the the secular affairs. And he said, no, you should uh, practice some kind of mental exercise, even though in the tea house and the wine bars. So with this sense, the pursuit of uh, aesthetic, we call ya. I don't have any uh, translation into English and Catherine suggests this is uh, the elegance, but, but this term, ya, is uh, much, much more than the elegance. It may be a kind of a scholar, uh, scholarly way to live in a very calm and very comfortable and very elegant way. 
and it is not the same as uh, Mr. Tulani, uh, Tulini said about the wabi-sabi state, but a little bit uh, they do not want to get in the troubles of the secular world. So this is a kind of uh, aesthetics in the Ming Dynasty, and it is of the highest order at that time. So in that case, the people try to uh, pursue different kinds of scholastic hobbies, like painting, like calligraphy, writing poems, or even the, uh, raising the cranes and flowers and building the gardens and also appreciation of art objects and for connoisseurship of antiques, of course. Amongst them, tea making and incense burning is two most commonly practiced, most common practice. So in the one Yi time, a man called Lu Xiaoheng, in his book, he mentioned the ideal life for a scholar. You have a very clean window, and then you have a scroll of paintings and a piece of qin, and for music, and you have a bird crane, and you have a bowl of tea, you have one, one uh, burner of the incense, and one book of the uh, famous calligrapher work. In your house, you have a small garden and transcribed path, several scrub of flowers, several birds, and several pavillon and several stones and some points and a few pieces of leisure cloud. So this is what the, the scholar want to pursue for. So at that time, they have a very close, they have a, a lot of small circle of friends to share their, their mind or to study together or enjoy tea together. And this is a very uh, conspicuous in the layman time. And also they will put some of the, their knowledge to write it into books to share their knowledge. So just from uh, judging to the end of the Ming Dynasty in a hundred years or so, there are nearly a hundred books were written at that time. And even though a lot of them, they copy from each other, but at that time, they have a, a, a huge amount of books on tea. And I think this is the most uh, 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 abundant uh, in, in the tea history of China. Most of the tea books are, main, are made in these hundred years. And also, by the middle of the 16th century, one thing is also very important in the Ming Dynasty is the closure of the overseas trading was gradually released. At the first emperor of Zhu Yuanjiang, they stopped this private business with overseas. Only the exchange is by the government. So even in Yongluo, Emperor, he sent Zheng He to visit uh, so many countries. It is much earlier than the Portuguese, and he traveled seven times up to Africa at that time. But the private business was not allowed. And only by the end of, uh, uh, by the middle of the 16th century, and it was reopened again. This is uh, partly because at that time the government need a lot of money because I just told you that the emperor, they do not care about the country affairs. They just want to enjoy themselves and then they spend a lot of money for this kind of luxurious living. For example, like the judging, he spent a lot of money uh, to rebuild the palace because he liked to burn incense. So one day, the palace caught, caught fire and was burned down. So he took a lot of money 
uh, to to rebuild the palace. So he want to have more tax from from the people. So gradually, gradually, the overseas trading is allowed. So by the first year of Longqing, in 1567, and the, the emperor officially announced the trading with overseas was approved. And then it led to a boom in the foreign trade in related industries. One of them is tea, the other is the porcelain. So that the porcelain from Jingdezhen was so popular and it led to the, maybe we can call it the first industrialization of China. Because the making of a small bowl, you need about 30 or 40 person to, to finish it. It has a very, very detailed division of labor. Some of them only responsible to draw a circle on the bottom. But of course, because uh, it make a lot of, uh, of porcelain ware and the quality in weather in Edelbury went down. So we have another book in Wan Li. He mentioned recently the products from Jingdezhen is useless because of the quality was so low, so low. And on the other hand, the pot by Shi Bin, actually this is, uh, the, uh, they miss a word, actually it should be Shi Da Bin, was much treasured by the people because it was made with coarse sand. And then the sand is very good for tea because it doesn't carry any earth smell. So it make a good, indirectly, it lead the popularity of this uh, purple sand teapots. So maybe I introduce the drinking method of the Ming Dynasty briefly also, because the tea wares were designed according to function. So with the tea drinking method changes, in, in Inevitably, the teaware design also changes. So, from the very early Ming Dynasty, when Ming Taizu commanded the stopping of making the tea cakes for tribute, but the drinking method was still the same, not much change. So, we can see uh, a sentence, some, some sentence, from a book called Cha Pu by Zhu Quan. This Zhu Quan was the 17th son of the emperor, Zhu Yuanzhang. So uh, he wrote a book around 1440, mentioned the way of making tea. So he said, we put one scoop of tea into the bowl and then we pour a little water and then stir it well until smooth. And then we dash in more water and then whisk with a whisk. And then let the tea come up to about 70% of the bowl, you can stop. And then the best tea is you do not find the water margin. So what is the water margin? Because when you mix the tea, you have a thick layer of the bubbles. With the bubbles split, this is uh, what we call the water margin. So as uh, uh, Professor Tolini just mentioned, they have dao cha in Japan, but they have different way of dao cha. In Japanese uh, dao cha, they want to recognize which one is the hon cha, the real tea from Uji and other is uh, uh, non-tea. That means the tea not made in the Wuji area. So this is uh, how you, uh, a kind of competition about your connoisseurship. But in China, the dou cha is looking for this water margin. So if you make the tea with a thick layer of a bubble, 
and it can stay longer until the water margin come out, until the split come out. Then you are the winner. So at that time, the, the, the tea must be very light and not much taste actually. And this is good for this game, Doja. So in the early Ming Dynasty, they are still looking for this water margin. So that means they don't have much difference about that. So this is a, a painting attributed to the Song Dynasty, but actually this is a main painting. So you can see the people have a bowl in one hand and he pour in the water with a ewer on the other hand. And then it is whisk and then drink. And there's another book about 70 years later he also mentioned about the tea wares they use. He said, we have 16 kinds of ware, all kept in a cabinet. The most important one is Ku Jie Jun, that means the, the oven made with bamboo. Because this uh, bamboo con uh, cabinet can give a kind of uh, ya. This is a character ya. And give you a very pure heart and very elegant uh, behavior for a scholar to keep. So you have uh, Xiangjiang. Xiangjiang is uh, actually is a, a, an oven. And then you have a tea cabinet, tea container water container, and then the charcoal basket, and then the water basin to wash the wares. And then also you have uh, the oven, you have the bamboo broom to clean the tea. And then you have the red charcoal container because you burn the charcoal somewhere and carry the burning charcoal into the oven. And also you have fire sticks, you have the tea weight, you have the fan, you have the tea washer, you have the tea water ewer, etc. So actually most of them are very similar to the Song Dynasty wares, except the hammer and the board is abolished because at that time you don't have the tea cake. You don't need the hammer to, to break the cake. So here are some uh, the pictures or the, or the diagram draw in on that book. And the top one, the left hand top one is the basket uh, of open basket. They call Ku Jie Jun. And then you have the cabinet to keep everything. The second one on my left hand is to keep tea. And then the right hand is to keep water. And then the bottom one is to keeping the charcoal. And then this is a water basin to wash the tea ware. So we have another two diagram, a bigger one to collect all the tea wares inside. The right hand side is for tea ware, the left hand side is for tea. But to the, to the end of the middle Ming Dynasty, the practice gradually, gradually changes from brewing the powdered powder tea to whisk the powder tea into drinking the whole leaf tea at that time. So the serving method is also very different. A man in Chen in 1593, he wrote a book called Cha Kao. He described the way of making tea at that time. The way of making tea, only the Suzhou and Wuzhou got the essence. So you boil the water and then you put in the good tea leaf and let it boil for some time. 
when the bubbles come up, and then you can stop. So that means you put the water and the leaf inside and boil it. And then in Hangzhou, they do it another way. They use a bowl and then put in the leaf and then pour the water over. So they don't boil the tea, they just soup the tea. And so the first one they call Jian Cha, the same character is as Japanese Sen Cha. I think this, this term came from China, Sen Cha. So at the beginning, they boil the tea leaf inside a tea container, a water container. And then another one is called Chuo Pao. Chuo Pao means you pick some tea leaf and to brew it. So another man of the similar time called Zhang Yuan, and he is more sophisticated, or more expertise to make a better tea. So he mentioned the way to brew the tea. First, you boil the water until it is well cooked. And then you pour a little bit into the teapot to warm it up and then you throw away the water, and then you put in the tea leaf, and then the amount of tea leaf should be very accurate. It can be too much or too less. And then after two pots, you have to wash the teapot again to make it cool and clean. When the tea is ready, and then you put the tea into the cups, and then the timing can be too early and can be too late. So this is the description of our modern tea brewing method. And also he has another section mentioned how to put your tea leaf. The way to put your tea leaf has some kind of consideration. You cannot miss it. First is the tea and then later is the water. There are three kinds of putting the tea leaf. The first one we call the lower drop. That means you put the tea first and then you pour in the water until full. And then we do pour a little water and then leave and then pour the water again. We call this middle drop. If you first pour the water and then the leaf, we call the upper drop. So the putting of tea leaf, you have, you have a lower drop, middle drop, and upper, upper drop. And also he cares about the season. For the autumn and spring, it is better to use the middle drop. For the summertime, you can use the upper drop. And then the winter time, for lower drop. That means it, it consider different temperature. So I think probably this, this gentleman, Zhang Yuan, he took his office in Fujian for about three or four years. So maybe he learned something from Fujian people because Fujian people is always uh, uh, taken as the, the most uh, connoisseurs of tea in China. So today, Professor Zhang mentioned and the Wu Yi, they have a lot of uh, tea experts there. So this is the way how we cook tea. And actually this is the, the, the image of our poster today. So you can see, and there is a water boiler probably is from Yixing, and today he has a very interesting slide to put the first dated Yixing ware together with this diagram. So you can see the bamboo oven, and the people use the fire stick to take care of the fire. Behind him, you have a big container for water, and then next to him is a container for tea. And before him, this is a pot probably for incense burning. So this is uh, how 
the laymen people make their own tea. So this is another picture you have seen today. And uh, actually this is diagram of the last, last colloquium. So you can see a scholar was talking with his friend. He has one teapot, Papere Yixing, with two cups. And then another servant in, a, in the next room boiling the water to prepare the tea for the master. So, I, find, uh, I read the books in the Lei Ming Dynasty, and some of them, they mention about the tea where they use. So I just take several examples. The first one is Zhang, De, Zhang Qian De in his book Cha Jing, and he has a, 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 a tea baker, and then he has a tea basket, big basket, and then he has a water ewer, and a teapot, and a teacup, and a tea bed, and then they have a tea washer, and then a tea ewer, and a tea oven. And then another book, it mentioned you have a tea kettle, a tea ewer, a tea bowl, and a tea box. This tea box is used to keep the tea in smaller portion. They take it out from the big container and put it into the small tea box for serving. And also a tea oven and a tea, this is a big, big wok for boiled water. And then you have a cabinet and you have some clove, tea towel. And another book is also similar things. So I make a table to compare them. So the first one is uh, you have, uh, you mentioned on, on the left hand side is the instrument making tea. And then the second part is the instrument utensil to brew tea. The third section is accessories. And then the fourth one is the boiling instrument. And then the last one is the con, uh, water containers. So you can see different kinds of teaware adopted in the Lei Ming Dynasty. From this table, it is very clear the most basic one is the tea ewer and the teapot. And these two things sometimes in this column, yeah. And for the teacups, all the tea mentioned, all the books mentioned, they have to use a teacup or tea bowls. And then three books mentioned they have a teapot. And then four books mentioned they have a ewer. And two of the book, they have both. So at that time, it is very confusing. Some people will separate the boiling pot from the brewing pot. And some of them, they use together and make it as one. But these three kind of pieces are the most important uh, teaware at that time. So this is another, the book, that, that the illustration from, from Zhang Yuan. So the top one on the left hand side is a tripod to burn the, uh, to, to, to boil the water and then the the right hand one is a, a cabinet to keep the tea ware. And then the lower to one to store the tea leaf. And the next one is a teapot, which called the monk cap teapot. This teapot, the first one came in the Yong Lord time, maybe for different use, but at that time, they are used as a teapot. And more interesting is uh, the, the bottom left hand side. This is a, a, a kettle or the cooking water ware. And it has a very special design because you have a hollow chini in the middle. So when you put on the fire, the fire can come out through the chini and boil the water quickly. Because at that time, 
the Ming Dynasty people already discover quicker you burn the water, you boil the water, the better the taste of the tea. So they invented this instrument. And nowadays, when you go to Chuzhou for the Kung Fu tea, they still use this kind of, we call the Chuan Xin Tiao. That means uh, uh, hollow hard cooker or boiler. Yeah. So this is a very interesting invention of the Ming Dynasty teaware. And on the right hand side is different kind of cups. And also, uh, it was interesting to know, to note, yes, usually the scholars thinking the cup with the stem is for wine. But in this diagram, we can understand it is so difficult to discriminate the wine cups and the tea cups. Sometimes they use for both purposes. And there's a ladle, and also this is uh, the, the fire stick, but it made in a, 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 in a shape of a pair of scissors, and also the clove to clean up, and then the, a basket to keep the clean utensils, and then the basin to wash it. So this is uh, some uh, tea wares in, in the Ming Dynasty. So, as the way of changing of drinking tea has a big evolution from the beginning of the Ming Dynasty up to the end of the Ming Dynasty. In these 250 years, about 250 years, the tea wares employed was inevitably changed and created. And among them, I just mentioned, the birth of the teapots and the most conspicuous, and also the cups is more, become smaller and smaller rather than a bowl at the beginning. So it comes from the bowl to, into a cup. And also the boiling water utensil have a big improvement. And when you're talking about all this kind of brewing, uh, drinking, the best material of course is ceramics. That means the porcelain in Jingdezhen. Jingdezhen started its uh, porcelain making to make the name as early as the Song Dynasty. And it becomes a very important center uh, since then. And so this one is from Hongwu and the first emperor. And this is from uh, Changhua. Changhua is uh, the f f early mid Ming. And this is another teacup. And this is famous for Dou Chai at that time. And this is very famous chicken cup, but it is not uh, filled up with color yet. This is uh, the raw from the queue. All these are broken because it is excavated from, from the queue. So this is a judging later time. And then this Wan Li, also Wan Li. And then the Yue at the very beginning, also it is so difficult to discriminate the Yue for wine or Yue for tea or the Yue just for pouring water. So this is uh, the, the, the early Yue in uh, early Ming Dynasty. This is the, the same shape as what I show you in the diagram in the Lei Ming, but this one is from Yongle in early Ming Dynasty. This is Xia Jing. The overhead handle is popular in the Ming Dynasty. So this is the same in Wan Li, like a Yue. And then the teapot, like this. This is also one year. Probably this is an export ware to Japan because at that time there's a lot of export to overseas. This is from Dehua uh, in Fujian. They are famous for the white porcelain. So, also the teapot, Yixing teapot, emerged by the Lei Ming Dynasty. 
And some scholars say the, the Yixing Purple Sand started from Song Dynasty. I strongly disagree with this. I think this is uh, the time when Yixing teapot become popular or become uh, merged from them, uh, 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 started to make it in judging period. This is uh, from the tomb of a, of a unique, of a eunuch of judging time. So this is the most important man at that time. And in his tomb, he used this teapot. It's still very primitive. You can see the lid. You don't have the lid. You don't have a lip inside, but you have a cross inside. And also the body is with different color. That means it is fire together with other wares. So this is Shida Bin. And at that time, the, the palace also loved to use all kind of wear. But he, uh, the king, the Wan Yi uh, king, did not treasure much about the Yixing. This is a bare, uh, unglazed uh, body. So he sent it to the palace to cover with the lacquer and have carving, a very beautiful carving. So this is another teapot attributed to be the Gong Chun, but actually this is a Lei Qing dynasty piece. Another piece by Shi Da Bin. So at that time, one phenomenon is at the beginning, it makes it a very, very big teapot. You have seen in the picture, and uh, in, in the Wen Jingming's picture, and two men sitting there have two small cups, but they have a very big teapot, something like that. But by the end of the Ming Dynasty, because this morning I just asked the question, and what kind of tea they left to drink in the late Ming Dynasty. And very probably, the quality of the tea improved a lot and much stronger. So they can use a big teapot. So the teapot is going to be smaller and smaller. And this one is about this size. Before the one is like this size. So it becomes smaller. And into the Qing Dynasty, when the Oolong tea was popular, it reduced further to this size, like a small orange. So this is uh, the, uh, how the design changes according to the tea drinking or the tea type, like this, very small one. This is in Yongzheng time, very small, like, a, like an orange. Okay, today the, the time is uh, not enough, so I stop here. Thank you.